Hello everyone and welcome to this day. Today is Thursday, September 21st and I'm Bobby Higgins. Coming up on this day, we'll have second Vice President Allison Bach with the monthly United update. She's going to recap the sep September 12th meeting, plus update us with their elections. And we're going to say goodbye to two retiring board members. And this brings us to today's Stay Informed. Do you remember Bob Eubanks? Well, he's coming here to the PAC this Saturday at 7 p.m. and he's bringing his show backstage with the Beatles. You probably know him from the Newlywed Game or the Rose Parade, but before all that, he was a disc jockey and he produced the Beatles concerts all three years they toured in America. And when we say the Beatles, yes, we mean that Beatles. This is a must-see show with personal backstage stories and a whole lot more. Tickets are still available, call 949-415-8030 to get your tickets today. And that brings us to the weather. Today is cool and cloudy with possible drizzle in the morning, although I'd say it's pretty dry out there. We'll have a high of 72 and a low of 61. If we do see some wetness, it'll dry off by the afternoon, but the clouds will remain throughout the day. Tomorrow on Friday, we'll have patchy low clouds early, then mostly sunny. Saturday brings morning fog, but then sunshine with a high of 75 and a low of 58. On Sunday, once the fog burns off, it'll be mostly sunny with a high of 78 and a low of 57, and it'll be mostly sunny on Monday to start off next week. And taking a look at today's sunrise and sunset, this is a beautiful yellow blooming flower, picture taken by Alan Clark. Today's sunrise was at 638, and the sunset will be at 649 p.m. tonight. Stay with us, we have a great show coming your way with United's update, but first, let's take a look at today's meetings. Pacific Cremation Services offers you the ultimate freedom to become one with the salty breezes and brilliant sunset reflections. A scattering at sea is a unique, beautiful way to honor the life of anyone who chooses to be cremated. We help you plan the details and understand what to expect. Choose from our three simple plans and let us help you start the process of healing and life celebration. Contact us at PacificCremationServices.com to create a personalized service at sea today. All great healthcare organizations care, but the best dare to reach higher. At Hogue, we lead with life-saving clinical trials and advanced therapies. Our world-renowned specialists innovate with state-of-the-art technologies like virtual reality and robotics. Hogue is the number one hospital in Orange County four years in a row. Now more than ever, your healthcare choices matter. Choose Hogue. Did you know that the Laguna Hills Lodge was originally built as a place for relatives or friends to stay when they were visiting? In 1968, Laguna Woods' residents built the first two buildings of the lodge because they wanted a place close by for visitors to stay. Since then, the lodge has become the spare bedroom for the Laguna Woods' residents. The lodge has received the TripAdvisor Award of Excellence eight years in a row. We invite you to stay in one of our recently remodeled garden rooms and take advantage of a special offer for Laguna Woods' residents, family, and friends. Hi, my name is Rhonda Plains. I'm from Fullerton, California. I absolutely love Dr. V. I am very happy to drive from Fullerton to Laguna Woods. I was having an issue with my vision. There was strobe light going off in my eye. Dr. Vias was able to get me in to see him the next day. Once I met him and he diagnosed the problem with my eye, I felt very comfortable with him and yeah, I'm just really happy that I found him. Welcome back to this day. Joining me now is Allison Bach, second vice president with United Mutual. Allison, welcome. It's so nice to meet you. Well, thank you, Bobby. So do you have uh, any uh, fun upcoming uh, events this weekend? Oh my goodness, this weekend is uh, really one of those transitional times because we're still in the middle of our election. 
United election. And I imagine that a lot of people haven't voted yet. They need to get out and vote, get that vote in, either by mail or in the box in the community center. So it's just eight more days until the election is finalized and the vote is, the count is taken on the 29th. And okay. we'll know the four people who are elected to serve. So, so you've got you've got a list of things you got to do this weekend. Then <laughs> I do, I do. Yeah. How long have you been on the board with United? I've only been on the board. Uh, this is my first year on the board. Oh, okay. And um, it's been a very uh, interesting, fascinating, challenging time to learn about this community more than I thought I knew already. It's it's really a fascinating experience. Oh, that's wonderful. I'm so glad we have seven people running. Yeah. Oh, good. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. And we'll get to the. The, all the election right. stuff first. I w wanted to ask you first about um, your first slide we have today, mm -hmm. um, talking about the September 12th mm -hmm. meeting. Yes. Um, why don't you go through this and tell me, uh, mm -hmm. recap this meeting for us? Yes, we have a number of resolutions that are out on 28 day notification, as it's called, where the board has approved them and it goes out for commentary and then the final. Uh, ratification will take place at the next uh, business board business meeting. One is revisions to the alteration fee when people want to make an alteration in their unit. Of course, uh, reasonable charges have to be made for the paperwork by the alterations area. And there's a new schedule for that, all very uh, reasonable and I think good news that reflects today's market environment for doing alterations, the cost of construction and so on. That's an important one. Uh, the next one is inclusion of, uh, actually, it's um, non-emergency um, services for painting alterations. Uh, we have added the ability to uh, paint alterations uh, that have been done uh, on the exterior of a, of a building. It's a non-emergency. It's a small fee that will be charged, but it's an easy way for people to get that, that particular part of the job done. The next one is may interest a lot of people, especially if they have pets, dogs that they walk, and that's the herbs, herbicide spray guidelines. It gives people a chance to opt out of uh, spraying around their particular units if they don't want herbicides sprayed around. And if you uh, opt out, if you want to cease that spraying, uh, you'll have to maintain those edges. It's interesting, there are about 84 miles of, of edges of borders oh, in wow. the community that have to be maintained. And with all the weeds and with all the invasive uh, grass species that we've had in the village uh, over the last couple of years, there's a lot of maintenance. So herbicides have been an effective way to control that and cut down on the ma manual labor that's required in doing all that edging. Well, if you don't want those herbicides sprayed around your unit, you can opt out of it, but then you'll be responsible for doing that edging and weeding, always fun. Okay. Next one is our lodger policy, and this is going to be the topic of a discussion that we'll have at our October town hall meeting, which is Friday, October 13th. Uh, performing Arts Center from two to four. The lodger policy is very interesting in that it's a response to uh, California Civil Code requirement. It's a code number 1946.A.A. .A. that says that people have the ability to rent a room in their unit if they so desire to someone of their choice. Now this is a way that the state has found uh, to help relieve the cr housing crisis in our state, affordable housing crisis. So we have developed a policy that is now out for review by residents. It's 28 pages long, and every con a possible uh, a problem that could be uh, anticipated has been anticipated in this policy. Uh, and we want people to look at it, to come to the town hall, discuss it, so that they're comfortable and understand what this is all about. A lodger is someone who would live with you in your unit while you're still living there also. It's kind of an old-fashioned Victorian sounding term, isn't it, a lodger? <laughs> but uh, it's a, a very simple idea that someone can stay for, with you, pay you a bit of rent, <clears throat> and be there for 30 days up to a year no less than 30 days. So you have to really think this through. Uh, it's to prevent uh, units from being used as Airbnb, for example, but it's a longer term and it is a solution and you've gotta be sure about that person you might invite to live with you. So 
could be very interesting for people and helpful for a lot of us. But it only goes into up to one year. Correct. So could you renew it yes. after a year? Oh, okay, yes. It. If it's going swell, there's no reason not to, then go ahead and do it. But uh, this has to be uh, approved by the village uh, in management as well as by a board of directors, uh, the person that is selected to be your lodger. And uh, I think we've thought it through very adequately. So this could be quite interesting. And now interesting. Every, all the residents have received that you said it was like a 28 page document? No, not or? yet. Okay. No, it's available, of course, uh, online. And it's available, uh, you know, if you look at the, uh, the Granicus of the, our, our board meeting, you can see what some of the discussion was. But we will have uh, all of that policy ready for, uh, for viewing for, by everyone who wants to okay. look at it. All right, wonderful. Yeah. And then, um, Let's see, what was the other things on the recap for September 12th? Mm -hmm. Yes, we've uh, got an open meeting coming up um, to uh, discuss our uh, private loan uh, program that's been proposed. It's called the Non-Institutional Loan Program. And I think of an easier way to think of it as a private loan. Not a bank giving you a loan against the value of your unit but a private loan, a private individual or a private company that is in the lending business. Um, we have been discussing this for a long time. A tremendous amount of work has been done by an ad hoc committee under Azar Ascari, our treasurer. Uh, people have worked hard on this to develop a program that is right for United. Now, what this means is that um, you will, might have the ability, if this all goes through and is approved, been reviewed by our attorney many times um, to loan to borrow out a certain amount of your equity. It's interesting that in United right now, the average value of our units is three hundred forty thousand dollars, and a lot of people own their units entirety in entirety. They have no loans against it. So to be able to take out a lump sum of money for any purpose you know, for medical reasons, for a trip around the world, to pay for college tuition for a favorite grandchild. You can think of a million reasons why people might want to borrow out some amount of money. Well, right now, uh, the way to, that we do it is, is going to have to be through this private loan uh, program that we're proposing. So a meeting is going to, uh, there'll be an open meeting that's coming up with the committee members who worked on this and with our attorney to disc all, discuss all the ins and outs of it so that people are um, familiar with it. This is a program that we set up by popular demand uh, because of the problem with lending in co-ops and condos. So that is coming up, I believe it's going to be on Monday, October 2nd. It's, the meeting hasn't been finalized quite yet. Plenty of announcement time before that'll occur. Another uh, item that came up on September 12th was a motion to um, uh, approve the increase of reimbursement to members for their electricity usage when they've had a moisture problem in their unit and there has to be a dry down. Well, if you've ever had a water problem, you know that a big part of it, of <laughs> fixing it, is to expose the, the wet area and let it dry out thoroughly before it's rebuilt. Well, what that means in United is that um, the uh, uh, company comes in that uh, provides large circulation fans that run overnight. They can run for days and days and days until the area is fully dried out and can be rebuilt. Well, that means extra electricity costs for that unit owner. And the way that uh, this new program would work would be we would take a look at your Southern Cal Edison bill the month before the problem, the month after the problem, and the month during the problem, and see what the difference is and reimburse the uh, unit owner for that differential that's obviously attributable to those mega fans running for that month. So basically, after after this a period yeah. of time, then you're going to submit these the right. you know the bills, and then it'll right. take some time to then yeah. be re will they receive like a check type yes. thing? That's how yes. it'll be reimbursed. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, that's yep. yeah, that's very nice. I know I yeah, don't get reimbursed when it happens at my house. <laughs> yeah, it, it used to be of just a flat fee of thirty two dollars per room, and somehow that wasn't right. When you know there might be multiple rooms and there might be a very long period of dry out. And of course, Southern Cal Edison rates have gone up. So we're trying to find an equitable way to pay people back for that extra juice use. 
Very nice. Uh -huh. Okay, and then moving to election right. news, mm -hmm. you have your candidates now. You mentioned you have right. seven candidates? We do. Their names are Nancy Carlson, Nikki Choi Ho, Ellen Leonard, Harold Medense, Sue Kwam, Lenny Ross, and Georgiana Willis. Uh, we will have four people elected from these seven. Of course, two of them are incumbents in the terms of being already board directors, Lenny Ross and uh, Sue Kwam. Um, Friday the 29th, all ballots must be in and will be counted at an open tabulation meeting in the boardroom. Everybody's welcome to come or to watch it on television. And uh, then on October 10th, the four new uh, directors will be seated uh, at the annual meeting. And then this is, uh, so th whoever is elected, they'll be serving for three years, correct? Three-year terms. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. And yep. then everybody should have their ballots by now? They do. And if for some reason you haven't received your ballot or it's been lost or whatever might have happened, there is a way to obtain a copy of it, and that is to uh, contact um, the group that handles our election. Uh, elections are handled by an outside independent agency that does a lot of election inspection. They're fully certified to do this. And there's a, a free number, 1-866-466-6455, um, that you can call if you have lost or never got a ballot and you want to vote. So please vote. Okay, wonderful, definitely. Everybody get, get, get your ballots ready. <laughs> yeah, you bet. And then um, lastly, you wanted mm -hmm. to give special thanks to two retiring board members. Oh, we sure do. We have two fantastic board members uh, that are leaving us, that are um, sort of retiring from the United Board, although they're not leaving the village, I hope. <clears throat> Cash Ashragar and Azar Iskari. Director Ascari, Azar has been our treasurer for the last three years. And she has been just a fantastic treasurer for United. She is an absolute bulldog when it comes to using our money wisely. She's chaired the Investment Ad Hoc Committee. She uh, invited uh, members of the community with significant career investment experience to help guide the board to eliminate losing investments and begin recovery. Uh, now we have treasury bills in our reserve accounts that are paying over 5% interest. And she also developed a new safe investment policy for United um, that is very enviable and being copied. And, we helped, and she helped to select uh, J.P. Morgan Chase Bank as our new investment advisor for the reserve funds. It's a lot of millions of dollars of important money for the community. Uh, she also chaired the Ad Hoc Loan Committee, which is developing that private loan program we talked about a couple minutes ago. Cash has served uh, also for many years. I hate to think of the thousands of hours that Cash has served uh, in two different um, uh, stints on the board uh, of United, as well as other boards uh, within the community. Cash has served now for two terms on United, He's been on members, hearing committee, the disaster preparedness task force, the purchasing ad hoc committee, maintenance and construction committee, the resident advisory committee and handyman task force. He also led the new resident orientation meetings uh, to inform and welcome new residents into United. And we will really miss Cash on the board. He's just a, a joy to work with. And uh, I'm so glad that he'll still be active in our community and around uh, for, uh, for many years to come. Yeah, well, it's definitely a, a very noble job. And as you oh, said, takes many, many thousands, hours. And, thousands yeah, of hours. So it's always hard mm -hmm. to say goodbye to good people. Yeah, yeah, that it is. Yeah. So, but, um, yeah, but with seven new mm -hmm. uh, potential candidates, you know, yeah, so uh, yeah. it's going to have some new and fresh ideas and, and new talents as well. So right. definitely stuff to look forward to. So thank you for joining us. Bobby, it's such a you. pleasure to meet you. Great, thank you. Okay, well stay with us because after, after the break, we have announcements and weather coming your way. have the health that you want to have? If your answer is no, this is for you. There's a lot of false hope for sale. Diets, supplements, medication, 
and they all work for a minute. But the root cause of most health challenges is chronic dehydration, and you can reverse it with this breakthrough science. To super spike your metabolism, optimize your organs, and give you back the vitality and energy that you truly desire. From 211 pounds to 174 pounds, your system is so doable and it works. Getting hydrated at the cellular level can cause you to be the healthiest you've ever been. Log on to our website, energizehealth.com, and watch documented testimonials, many of them by medical doctors. I feel like I owe you my life. I'm taking no diabetes medicine. So log on to our website at energizedhealth.com. That's energizedhealth.com. Welcome to the RadNet Health Spot. I'm Stephanie Landon talking to you today about screening for lung cancer. Did you know that each year more people die of lung cancer than of colon, breast, and prostate cancers combined? The good news is that the numbers of new lung cancer cases and deaths from lung cancer continue to decrease, partly because people are quitting smoking and also due to advances in early detection. With that in mind, let's take a look at lung cancer screening so you can understand your risk or that of someone you love. Low dose CT is a specialized screening that is used to find lung cancer before you have symptoms and before the cancer has spread when it becomes more difficult to treat. The exam itself is quick and easy. There are no needles for contrast or x-ray dye and no need to fast before the exam. Most importantly, this screening test is covered by almost all insurance plans for most people at high risk. So what is considered high risk? There are a few factors used to assess candidacy for this screening, all of which involve your smoking status. These include having at least a 20 pack year smoking history, currently being a smoker or having quit smoking within the last 15 years, and you are between the ages of 50 and 80. Anyone who is at high risk for lung cancer due to their smoking history should speak with their healthcare provider about getting a low dose chest CT. The fact is, the key to surviving cancer is finding it in its earliest stage. And the best way to find lung cancer early if you are at high risk is with a low dose lung CT. Captain America. <laughs> Watch HGTV. Netflix.
Welcome back to this day. Let's take a look at the upcoming movie for tomorrow on Friday. Friday's movie is Born Yesterday, starring William Holden, and this is being brought to you by Pacific Financial Planners. And this is a story of a brassy blonde mall. Billy, Billy Dawn hits Washington, D.C. with her unscrupulous millionaire sugar daddy, Harry, and his sleazy lawyer, who has been pressuring Harry to marry Billy by pointing out that a wife cannot be forced to testify against her husband. In an effort to make Billy more socially acceptable, Harry hires a journalist to smarten her up. And sparks soon fly between Billy and the journalist. It's definitely a classic movie for sure. And now taking a look at some announcements and upcoming events coming this week. Today, September 21st, is the UN's International Day of Peace. Concerned Citizens invites you to celebrate and mingle with poets and performers at their free annual International Day of Peace featuring Poems for Peace. This event will be held today in Clubhouse 7. Doors open at 2.30, and this event is free for everyone. Also, later today, the Theater Guild presents Reader's Theater Showcase of six short humorous plays. This event will be held in Clubhouse 5. Doors open at 6.30, and the show starts at 7 p.m. You can purchase tickets at the door for your guests for $10, and members are free. And looking to next week on Monday, September 25th at 1215, the Senior Center presents Diabetes 101. You can learn about groundbreaking, groundbreaking treatments for people with diabetes or at-risk diabetes. Please RSVP to the Senior Center at 949-380-0155. And also next week on Tuesday, September 26th in Clubhouse 5, the California Club presents Autumn Stardust, a cabaret dinner dance with the Stardust vocal duo on stage and dance music by the 10-piece band Close Harmony. Included is a four-course dinner served with complimentary wine. Call today with any questions and to make your reservation at 949-342-4092. And real quick, looking ahead at the weather, we were supposed to have some drizzle today, but it's pretty uh, dry out there, high of 72 and a low of 61. Tomorrow will be partly sunny, mostly sunny on Saturday, mostly sunny on Sunday. On Saturday and Sunday, there will be a little bit of fog in the morning, but then it will clear off to sunny skies and sunny on Monday as well. Looking ahead tomorrow, we have Sterling Financial. Financial, Sports Corner, and the Pub Club. So I hope you enjoyed the show today. Michael Taylor will be back in the studio tomorrow, and I'll see you next Wednesday. Have a great day, everybody. Hi there, I'm Bob Eubanks. Remember me, I'm the king of whoopee. <laughs> and you're watching Village Television, but everybody does.